Welcome in to Outkick the Show. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope that you are all having fantastic Mondays wherever you may find yourself in the world. This is Outkick the Show presented by Oddshark. Go to Oddshark for all of your gambling and informational related needs, boys and girls. And boy, do we have a doozy of a show. Let me go ahead and get you started. If you have not read my... uh, Hold on, I like how my phone is still on here. If you have not read my story, then I would encourage you guys to go read this story at Outkick the Coverage that I just put up. But it is certainly a messy situation and hard to defend... Delta. Happy to be back in the States. First of all, I've been gone for a couple of weeks uh, in Paris and in London. We had an incredible family vacation. Got to do a lot of amazing things. I'm going to start with the positive. I said this on the radio show this morning. If you ever get an opportunity to go to Normandy and see the situation at D-Day, see the beaches, go around on a private tour like I did, you will find it to be a life-changing experience. Same thing if you go to London and you get an opportunity to go into the Churchill War Room bunkers that's a phenomenal experience. I also got to Wimble- got to go to Wimbledon. Shout out to my guy Andy Roddick who watches the show sometimes. He hooked up my family with uh, tickets to Wimbledon. All five of us went there. We had a phenomenal time. Going to Wimbledon is a great sports experience if you are a fan. Um, so that uh, is a... Uh, and Andy Roddick's a great dude. Um, I got to know him at Fox Sports when we were working uh, on Fox Sports Live sometime. Just a really good dude, uh, but he hooked up my family. You know, I texted him and said, hey, I'm going to Wimbledon. Do you have any connections? Next thing you know, he's got six tickets uh, all taken care of. Incredible seats at center court. Incredible seats at court one. My family was able to go and have a fantastic day. So thanks to to Andy Roddick, uh, Outkick reader, um, and uh, and sometime Periscope and Facebook Live viewer, buddy of mine that is just a good dude all around. So thanks to him for hooking us up there. But I want to start with what I think is, is a messy situation. Um, this, uh, we flew back on uh, Saturday. Flew back, we went to Paris, we went to London, we had an incredible time, gone for two weeks, one of the longest vacations I've taken uh, in my life. And I'm going to try to do it now in the summer, so I'm trying to work on whether or not it's true or not, uh, a work-life balance, right? I've got young kids, I've got a family, I work all the time. But in the summer, when things kind of slow down, I'm going to try to get away for a couple weeks at a time. And this is the first time I've done it in six years, uh, since I started OutKick, that I vanished. I uh, appreciate all the uh, all the feedback and also all of you who were willing to let me have some uh, some time off. Yeah, my kids are 9, 6, and 2. And by the way, we're going to WWE tonight. WWE Raw is in Nashville. I can't wait to get down and see that event. So uh, I'm on uh, Delta Airlines, uh, flying back with my family from Paris to Minneapolis. We had to go through Minneapolis, then to Nashville. There's no direct flights to Nashville. So about halfway over the Atlantic. My son has to go to the bathroom. My wife takes him to the bathroom. I am sitting there. I never get to watch movies anymore because I work all the time. So I'm sitting there with my little screen and the, the, the headset in front of me watching The Conjuring. And The Conjuring is an incredible movie. It's like I didn't even know The Conjuring existed. I like horror movies. Never even knew that The Conjuring existed because I'm a dad now and I never have any time to go to actual movies. Only two movies I've been to see recently are Cars This Summer. Cars 3 and Despicable Me 3. That's the only movies I've seen in the movie theater. We were in London. Uh, I gave the boys a choice. I said, you guys get to choose what we do today. Not going to do a museum. Not going to do like typical tourist things. We'll do whatever you want. And they said, we want to go see Despicable Me 3, Dad. And we want to go to McDonald's. I've never been prouder to be an American than on that day. So I would see those movies. But I'm sitting there watching The Conjuring. My wife takes my six-year-old to the bathroom. And when he's in the bathroom back there, he starts to like scratch his head. And he starts to scratch his head really aggressively. Uh, evidently I didn't see it and my wife said like she looked down and saw suddenly for the first time that he had lice in his hair the flight attendants are in the back of the plane near where they're going to where he's going to go to the bathroom they suddenly gather all around and they say oh my god he's got lice and so they uh, get on their phone they make a big deal of it my wife comes back and she uh, she taps me on the shoulder and uh, and she says uh, just so you know um, you know they, they are saying that uh, they are saying that, that that he's got lice. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it's very common for kids to get lice these days. Like it's it's absolutely no issue at all. Like it's very common. I don't know why it's become so common. I think there's like super lice bugs. But right now, if you have kids, somebody in your kids, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, they've got lice. They've got issues with lice, and it is uh, it is uh, it happens every now and then. 
So we knew that this was a possibility because my twin nephews had gotten lice a few weeks ago. And so we treated them with the shampoo and everything else. We gave them baths. We were watching them. Never saw it at all. Never had a single complaint until we're suddenly in the air halfway over the Atlantic Ocean. Now I wonder on some level whether it was the air. You know how you sit on an airplane and you have like the, uh, you have the air that like blows right into your hair? I'm wondering on some level whether that was what kind of set off like his frustration and he started to itch his head. And then from there things got worse. I'm not sure exactly what, uh, what the exact situation was. But I thought it was pretty fascinating in and of itself. So he's got lice in his hair. And we're in the back of the plane. Uh, we're back of the plane. My wife comes up. I'm watching The Conjuring. And she taps me on the shoulder and I leap because I'm like terrified, right? It's a scary movie. I had no idea it existed. By the way, I watched The Conjuring 1 and The Conjuring 2 on the flight. And so what's crazy about it is we're there and we're having this, uh, we're having this issue. We're sitting down. And by the way, if you're having issues with it, I don't need. I don't need to know about your issues in the comments. You can go to Facebook Live. If you're having an issue, then go to Facebook Live, all right? You can go to Facebook Live and you can grab it. It's, uh, it's a Periscope uh, issue. If you are having an issue, I don't need to hear about it right now. It looks fine on my end. Most people are having no issues at all. Might be your Wi-Fi connection. Then go to Facebook Live and try it out there. All right? So we're, uh, she says that we need to know that we are not allowed to leave the airplane. We're not allowed to leave the airplane when we land because they said that, uh, they, said that they, have to, they have to talk to us. So I start looking up all these different issues. I don't know anything about lice. I, I've never done any lice research. But as soon as I hear that, I get out my laptop, I start doing all this lice research. And what I find out is that it's now not that big of a deal according to the CDC because lice has become so common. We don't treat it as this massive issue. Lots of school districts don't even require kids to go get treatment for lice. They don't check for it anymore. Uh, and you don't get sent home from school if you have lice. Even at a school where there's tons of kids running around all day Kids are elementary school kids, everything else. They don't send you home for life. And so <clears throat> I do all this research. I can't find out anything at all about the policy that an airline has for life. I can't find a single person who's ever written about being evicted from an airline because their kid has life. So the, the, this woman comes up and she's awful. She's an awful human being, I can already tell. Looks like Nurk's ratchet, like angry, bitter flight attendant. Everybody gets off the plane. We're literally the only people on the plane, my wife and the kids. And this woman comes up and she says, you're not going to be allowed to continue your flight and get to Nashville. And at that point, I was like, no, no, this is not going to happen. We are going to Nashville. We are going to continue this flight. We've already, we're traveling from overseas. We've already been in the air for eight and a half hours. We've got a one and a half hour flight left. All we have to do is walk the, down the gate, go through customs, get on this plane. We'll be in Nashville in an hour and a half. We'll get taken care of. We'll get the issue solved. We'll be back home. we got no issues. So then Delta brings in two medical people. I don't know who they are. They're Delta employees. They don't even really say. But they're like, we need to conduct a physical examination of your kids. And I'm like, what are you talking about? One of them has lice. Uh, we just want to get on a plane and get home and get back to Nashville. And they say, well, we need to conduct a physical examination. I said, what does that entail? Well, they say, basically, we need to just check and see if they have a fever. And I'm like, well, first of all, this is weird. Are you telling me you can't travel on Delta Airlines if you have a fever now. Like there's always people with communicable diseases. In fact, the flight that we were on, I thought a woman was going to die of Ebola. They had to shut down the bathroom because she was throwing up so much. So anyway, they, 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 I, but I know my boys don't have a fever. So my nine and six-year-olds, they give them, uh, they give them the, the test. They have 98.3, whatever it is, perfect, uh, perfect temperatures, 98.6, zero issue. So the person says, okay, we get off the plane. Customs is broken. So we're in line for like an hour and a half. And this nurse ratchet chick comes back again. She comes back again and she says, I need to conduct an examination of your kids again. And so we leave the line. It's me, my six-year-old, and my nine-year-old, and some sort of medical person. And she says, and I said, well, I don't want them to get a medical examination done. And she says, if you don't allow this medical examination, then you're not allowed to fly. So wait a minute. Delta Airlines is in the business now of conducting medical examinations of potential passengers, including a six-year-old, about whether or not he has hair lice? And she said, yeah, so whatever. The I'm like, whatever. The lady checks. I'm like, maybe he doesn't have hair lice. I don't know. I'm not an expert in lice. Lady looks at it. I have no idea she, who she is, what her qualifications are. And she's like, yeah, he's got high lice. Go back through customs. Thankfully, don't have to declare the lice uh, as a, at the customs agent. Uh, get through. And we walk through like the doors when you enter into the actual airport. There are two different Delta employees, the awful nurse ratchet ugly chick and another her boss. 
and he says, you're not allowed to get onto the flight, you have to leave the airport, and he says we have to go to the emergency room and get treatment for lice. Swear to God. My wife at that point loses it, because I had told her before, I had said, whatever you, whatever you do, whatever you do, uh, don't talk. Let me talk. Don't admit to anything. Like, I put on my lawyer hat, I'm like, I'm going to handle this, all right? I'll handle this negotiation, I'll handle this. We're not staying in Minneapolis. So my wife says, wait, you want us to go to the emergency room to get treated for lice? And he's like, yeah. And in addition to your kid who has lice, the entire family has to get treated. And I said, wait a minute. You're telling me that all of us are not allowed to get on the plane? He said, yeah, it's a family unit. None of you are allowed to travel. And I said, you got to be fucking kidding me. I said, you have got to be kidding me that we have a six-year-old who has lice. And now the entire family has to go to some place in Minneapolis. We don't have a car. We don't have a hotel room. Like, we don't have any kind of thing. We have to leave the airport. And so at that point, I, I start to lose my mind a little bit. But I'm also thinking in the back of my head, I don't want to get dragged out of here like this Asian doctor where everybody's like, what happened to Clay Travis? This kid got lice. Next thing you know, he's getting arrested at the Minneapolis airport. So I'm like, all right, let me just walk through this. I said, if somebody has a heart attack, let's say there's a group of 10 people traveling, and one person has a heart attack, and the other nine people want to continue on and take their flight, you're telling me that Delta's position is that all 10 people are not allowed to travel on that plane, even though only one of them is sick. I said, my wife, even though I think you're full of shit, my wife is willing to stay here and go get this treatment for him, but I want to take my two-year-old, and I want to take my nine-year-old, and I want to get on this flight and just get back home. That's all I want to do. Like, we're an hour and a half from home. We're in Minneapolis, a city where we know no one, and he's like, no, you have to leave. And so it escalates, and eventually he says, I'm gonna, unless you leave, I'm going to call security. So I leave, take the family, we go downstairs, and I think, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get us a flight on Southwest. I'm fortunate, I've got money. We'll see if there's a flight out of Minneapolis on Southwest Airlines or anybody else. So I get on Southwest. All, most of the flights are booked, but I managed to get a ticket for me and for the two-year-old. So Delta, meanwhile, my wife is on her phone in Minneapolis trying to find a lice place to be treated. There's one like 30 minutes from the airport. And they also tell us, by the way, you can't get back on the plane unless you show up with a medical certificate showing us that you have been treated for lice. Seriously. They're like, we will not allow you to board this plane. I'm like, we just flew from Paris all the way to Minneapolis, and now you're not letting us get home? It's a 12-hour drive. It's not even possible. It's late in the afternoon on Saturday. I'm like, this is a ridiculous situation. And by the way, I hate when dumb people are given positions of authority. Because I've already pointed out all the different flaws with this process, right? Go read the article if you want to read it. Like me kind of working through how ridiculous this is. So, but before I left, I said, hey, just so you know, well, I told him beforehand that I was a lawyer. And that's why I also looked up the law. And I actually made the argument before I left. I said, look, according to aviation law, and I think this is true, although I'm not an aviation law expert. According to aviation law, you are able as a passenger to allow the captain of the plane, the pilot of the plane, to make the decisions about who gets on his plane. So I said, I'm going to just take my family to the gate and security, through security and everything else. We've already got tickets on this plane and allow him to decide. I want to hear from the pilot that my six-year-old's lice is too much of a danger. By the way, everybody's traveling with all sorts of shit going on, right? The lice, in the grand scheme of things, it sounds bad, but it's incredibly common. It's not as if this is some, like, it's not Ebola, right? It's not even the flu. It's not even a cold. Like if you had to choose between traveling next to somebody who had a bad cold or you had to travel next to somebody who had a kid who had lice in his hair, I think everybody with a reasonable decision making should go with the lice in the hair. It's not that significant of an issue. Again, at school now, they don't even send kids home for lice. They would send you home if you had a fever. So how did they know he had lice? People who are coming in now. Because he was scratching his head in the back of the plane and the flight attendants came over and said, oh my God, does he have lice? That's how it started. So he just happened to be up, my six-year-old, going to the bathroom, and the flight attendants came running over and started looking through his hair, like conducting a medical examination, like it's a freaking doctor's. And then they conducted a thorough, a, a, a further medical examination in the fucking customs line. There's all these people moving around, and they have some woman show up with latex gloves and start pouring through my kid's hair. I mean, it's unbelievable. Good question. How many animals fly with fleas? A shit ton. A shit ton of animals fly with fleas. Great point. I wish I'd thought of that for my article. Um, and, so, uh, and so I say to the guy, I say, look, I'm a lawyer. I'm pretty confident about the law here. I think you guys are totally wrong. I said, I think this is going to look bad for you. And it's funny, all the time I tell these company representatives, like remember when Jack Daniels pulled my advertising because I said I didn't think the word Confederate should be sandblasted off of Vanderbilt University? I'm an alum of Vanderbilt, love the university. 
But I said it's ridiculous that Vanderbilt's going to spend several million dollars to sandblast the word Confederate off of Confederate Memorial Hall. And Jack Daniels said, you can't endorse our whiskey anymore. And I talked to the people at Jack Daniels, the representative. I said, look, do you know who drinks your whiskey? It's people who read OutKick and are huge college football fans. They are going to be on my side. Jack Daniel himself was the brother of Confederate soldiers and would have fought for the South if he had been old enough to do so. He was just too young. He's a Tennessean. Do you think people are going to be upset at the fact that your brand is connected to a guy that everybody who drinks your whiskey actually agrees with? And they were like, we would think you're wrong. And what happens? Worst single day Jack Daniels ever had on social media was the day they said that I wasn't allowed to appear at their event as, a, uh, as an event spokesperson. They were paying me some money to show up at a Jack Fire cinnamon whiskey event. Um, and I said this to the Delta people. I said, look, I, I just want you to know, like, I, I never pull the card of who I am. I said, my name is Clay Travis. Uh, I write uh, a website. It's really popular. Outkick the coverage. I've got a morning radio show. I've got a big audience. You can just pull up my Twitter handle right now if you want. All right? I said, I'm going to write about this. I think you guys are making a really bad decision. I want to talk to your boss. I said, my boss is going to have the same opinion. You can't talk to him. I said, look, this is going to be a really bad look for you. I said, if you guys had a bad look happen for Delta in Minneapolis, because this is going to be a bad look for you. I'm just going to, and I, I said it like, I, I, I felt like such a douchebag for saying it, but I'm like, I'm going to write about this on the internet. Now, there might have been other people who say I'm going to write about this on the internet. When I say I'm going to write about something on the internet, like millions of people are going to see and read it. All right. That's just what happens when I write things on the internet. That's what I do. Like some people are good at things. Some people are bad at things. Like I'm fucking good at writing on the internet and having people read what I write. So I'm trying to be honest with these people. Like just all I want to do is just get on my plane and fly. And you know what? I didn't tweet about this. It happened on Saturday afternoon evening. I didn't tweet a single thing about it. I didn't because I wanted to write the full story. I think a lot of times if you tweet like some like quick line, then it gets lost in the in the in the flow. I wanted to write a full story. So I said, okay, you know, like just so you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to write about this. It's going to be a bad look for your company. So I get my two-year-old on the flight. We fly back. We travel for like 24 hours. We have to go through Chicago. Uh, I made a funny joke in the article about how I knew Southwest would be fine because everybody who flies Southwest already has lice. By the way, want to give props to Southwest? I don't believe this would happen on Southwest Airlines. I don't believe that they can employ douchebags like this. I think reasonable people would have said, look, get the kid fixed. Uh, when he gets to Nashville and an, an, an hour and a half more flight, like get things fixed, you'll be fine, right? Uh, again, somebody pointed out that they fly with dogs and cats all the time on planes, and a lot of those dogs and cats have fleas. And nobody's going to be like, are they going to start going through flea collars, like and going through the animals to check and see whether they have fleas? And by the way, how about conducting a medical examination on a six-year-old in public and not allowing him to fly to the extent that my six-year-old, who a lot of you have watched on this show or seen pictures of, came to me and he said, he apologized. He said, Dad, I'm so sorry that I got, that I got lice and, I managed, and the whole family got pulled off of the plane for it. I said, but it's not your fault. Your nephews had lice. Like, it's common for kids who were playing in the summer and rolling around in swimming pools and fighting and wrestling uh, to end up like one kid has lice, another kid gets lice. Not your fault. Um, but it's just a bad move by Delta. And uh, I, I find it to be thoroughly indefensible by them. I hope they change their policies. And uh, I, I wanted to wait and write the full story before I, I talked about it at all. I talked about it some on the radio this morning. There's a full article. You can go read about it. Um, I did my research on lice and everything else. And I think it's just a really bad policy to set in place. So my wife is left behind with our nine-year-old and our six-year-old. Let's take a 30-minute cab ride out to a de-lousing facility. Because even though everybody didn't have lice, the other aspect of this is Delta insisted that the entire family be treated for lice. So we had somebody come out to the house yesterday. I don't have it. My, uh, my, uh, my two-year-old didn't have it. And my nine-year-old didn't have it. So the only one who had it of the kids was the six-year-old. So they were demanding that everybody be treated for lice. I think this thing costs hundreds of dollars. I haven't even seen the bill yet. But my wife had to take them out there. They spent hours out there. Then they had to get a ride back. Like all of these things are a disaster. I mean, think about this from an easy perspective. Let me give you a couple of hypotheticals that I used in my, uh, my answer. Can you imagine if a kid was traveling with a guardian and that guardian only had the ability to take that kid on an airplane or if a kid was traveling by himself or herself? Are you really telling me that if Delta saw a 12-year-old scratching his head aggressively or a 10-year-old or a 9-year-old on their airplane that they would insist that that kid get off the airplane and go get de-loused in a strange city that he knew no one in and then before he was allowed to get back onto the plane? Like that is an absolutely ridiculous perspective to follow. 
All right? I mean, it just it is an absolute ridiculous perspective to follow. It's a bad policy being implemented by really dumb people. And by the way, it's not a policy that's public. I look to see what's the policy for when it comes to lice. Shouldn't they actually follow the policy of the CDC? Which is, if they suddenly discover at a, at a school now that a kid has lice, they let him finish the day. They don't send him home. If you discover that a person on your plane en route to a destination has lice, particularly if it's a kid, are you really telling me that, that kid should be pulled off the plane, his entire family should be pulled off the plane, as opposed to just letting him finish his travel? It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, I, I just think it's a fundamentally broken idea. I'll answer your questions now. You guys may have some questions about this that I haven't answered. Again, my name is Clay Travis. This is Outkick the Show, presented by Odd Shark. Um, oh, and let me go ahead and do a couple of ads for you now, and then I'll answer your questions. So hold off on the questions. Uh, Want to create family tradition of vacationing in Orlando every year for very little money? Uh, I think that's a good idea. Visit MagicalRealty.com. Find the vacation ownership that suits you best. Right now, you can own a Sheraton Vistana timeshare in Orlando for only $500 compared to the eighteen grand the original owner paid. If owning isn't your thing, they specialize in rentals for Aruba, Orlando, and Hawaii. Contact Magical Realty to help you save big on your future vacations. Email them at info at MagicalRealty.com. All right, questions that you guys may have about this Delta situation uh, that obviously I am talking about now. I, I'm not really necessarily considering a lawsuit. I'd like for Delta to apologize. I'd like for them to adjust their, uh, their policies. I think it's a ridiculous position to take to conduct a medical examination of a six-year-old kid in the customs area with hundreds of people standing around watching him. I mean, that's shameful. I think that I think some doctors have said they think that's a HIPAA violation to have somebody there standing making a medical diagnosis. Um, I think the plan should be in a situation like this that the kid gets to finish the flight. Like all I was asking was just to be able to get back to Nashville. And an hour and a half flight, we'd already flown from Paris. If we had known that he had this issue, we would have probably, we would have probably, would have definitely tried to treat it in uh, Paris. We would have definitely treated it in London if we had known it happened. Again, when his nephews got this issue, my wife went out and bought all the shampoos and everything else before the kids had it. They take a ton of baths. I didn't see it. Like I'm constantly ruffling my hand through his hairs. I carried him around on my shoulders all over Europe on the vacation. Uh, I didn't ever see it. My wife didn't see it, like combing his hair right out of the bath. Like it wasn't that apparent until again he got on the flight and suddenly said that his hair started to itch. So I just think it's a uh, it's a really strange position for Delta to adopt. I think it's really weird. Uh, what was the answer to asking to see the captain to have him make the final call? They said that was that was not a possible. I said I want to go to the gate and and ask the captain. Here's what I was afraid of. I was afraid that I was going to get arrested. Honestly. I felt, because I saw what happened to that United Airlines doctor, and I'm like, I don't want to sit the message to my kids that you should get arrested even when you know that you're in the right and they're in the wrong. So I aggressively argued. I made the exact same case to you guys uh, on my column and also right now on this show, everything about this process. I said, look, here's the deal. Uh, I feel very confident in my legal position here. I think you guys are wrong. And frankly, the people that I was talking with were not as smart as I was, which typically happens. Let's be honest. And um, it was an issue. Like I, They wouldn't allow me to talk to their boss. They wouldn't allow me to talk to the, the pilot on the plane. I don't feel like I talked to anybody with an IQ over 100. I feel like most people in Delta corporate who will inevitably be reading this article will say, yeah, we shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be in the business of conducting medical examinations of children to see whether or not they're allowed to continue on planes with their parents. So that's the truth. Um, yeah, that's what I said. The pilot has the right. I mean, the pilot had the right. So I wanted to go to the gate, but here's what I was afraid of. I was afraid that security was going to show up. They were threatening me with security. I don't want to get arrested. I'm a public figure. I don't want suddenly there to be a story. Clay Travis gets uh, irate passenger. Clay Travis gets arrested in Minneapolis, Minnesota, because he's upset about the lice policy on an airplane. For the same reason that I didn't tweet about it on Saturday or tweet about it on Sunday, because I wanted to be able to write the full story and let you guys all read it before you made a decision about whether or not you think. Uh, they were in the wrong. And again, I would encourage you guys to go read it at OutKick. Tag Delta in your comments if you think they were in the wrong. In the wrong. So far, I'm 38. And I've never been arrested. I'd like to maintain the rest of my life a zero arrest record. I certainly don't want to get arrested in an airport in, uh, in Minneapolis over my six-year-old having lice. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's the uh, truth. Um, any additional questions about this? And then I'll move on to, uh, to Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah, look, I tried to be balanced. I tried to be, I mean, I was, I was loud in the context of I raised my voice, uh, but, uh, but I don't think I behaved in any kind of inappropriate fashion. Uh, they were wrong. 
Um, and again, like we're already having flown for eight and a half hours where, where, you know, it's a long travel day with kids. And so suddenly when you're telling, and again, think about the difficulties here. Think about if a guardian, just think about, I want to give you a couple of hypotheticals. If a kid were traveling by himself, is Delta's position really that that kid, if he had lice, has to get off the plane, that he's not allowed to continue his flight and that he has to go get treated despite the fact that he's by himself? Is Delta's position really that if there were 10 kids, let's say from a school trip traveling and they discovered that one of them had lice, that the chaperone would have to stay with a kid they didn't know at all and stay in a hotel room with them and potentially sexually assault them or have any kind of uh, things go awry. I mean, but you're asking a mom in my wife's situation, because I came home with a two-year-old, which made it a little bit easier, but you're asking a mom who's never been to Minneapolis before to suddenly be in charge of trying to get medical treatment for her kid in Minneapolis to be able to travel back. I mean, that's just, to me, a patently absurd position to be in. It really is. A um, couple of things. Uh, Game of Thrones was amazing. We did an entire reaction show to it. Uh, the opening of Game of Thrones, loved it with Arya. Have not heard anything from Delta at all. Uh, have not heard anything at, at all from Delta. And again, I didn't tweet about it until I wanted to write the full article. But no, Del nobody at Delta has reached out to me at all. Um, I would like to then uh, see, uh, see what happens exactly. Um, all right. Uh, and uh, Game of Thrones is incredible. Uh, by the way, last chance here. Questions. Anything I have not addressed about the Delta incident. My wife handled it so much better than I did. My kids handled it so much better than I did. Uh, my six-year-old came to me, like I said, and apologized for having lice. Uh, I agree. I mean, strangers shouldn't be able to touch your kid. But what do you say when they say you're not allowed to get on the plane unless you let us conduct a medical examination of you? What do you want to do? Fly private? I'm not that rich. I mean, I wish I were rich enough to have my own private plane or be able to afford to fly private. Like the vast majority of people in the United States, I don't have that option. I don't have enough money yet to be able to fly private. You would have driven home 12 hours. Uh, more power to you. You had to go rent a car and then drive home 12 hours. I mean, if it had been Atlanta, that's what I would have done. If it had been, you know, somewhere relatively close. But Minneapolis is 12 hours from Nashville. That's a long-ass trip. Buy a private jet. Yeah, well, if you want to pay me $100 million for OutKick right now, then I'll go buy a private jet. I don't have the money to buy a private jet yet. Um, so uh, I, I, I'm anti-driving guy. I'm not going to drive 12 hours because of this situation. I'm going to fly somehow. I feel like we'd probably win a lawsuit, too. Um, I, I mean, I think Delta should really reach out. They should be apologizing to us. Um, and more importantly, they should be changing this policy. Again, I Googled it trying to find out what the situation was, what the policy was in place. I mean, this applies to us. I'm fortunate. I've got resources. I've got money. I can afford to try to get everybody on a different flight. But to me, where this really becomes an issue is there are lots of parents out there. It happened to us. But if you have a young kid, it could very easily happen to you that you're on a flight somewhere with a connecting flight and your kid starts itching his head because suddenly you realize that he's got lice and then Delta says they're not allowed to continue their flight. Um, you know, it would have been a real disaster for us if this had been our flight to Europe because then we miss our connecting flight to Europe and, uh, you know, we might have major issues that we're trying to get to. Um, anyway, I, I just think it's a total mess. Um, and, uh, and again, if anybody has an airline connection, and they want to start advertising with OutKick, and as part of that, they want to fly as private, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to never fly commercial aviation again, but I ain't rich enough yet to fly in that manner yet. Uh, they have not refunded any of the tickets. I have not gotten anything back from Delta at all. Um, also want to tell you, tonight, my kid, now D. Loust, and I, and my other kid, and my wife, we're all going to WWE. Do you know why we're going to WWE? Because we have the SeatGeek app. I went on the SeatGeek app, Wanted to decide where we were going to sit. I said we're going to get awesome seats for Raw tonight. WWE Raw is in Nashville. Went on the SeatGeek app. Looked for them. You can do the same. All you have to do is go to the SeatGeek app. Download SeatGeek. Go to the settings tab. Click add a promo code. If you put in the promo code OUTKICK, that's one word, O-U-T-K-I-C-K, you get $20 off your first purchase. Go do it today. Download the SeatGeek app. Do what I did. Get hooked up with Raw in advance. WWE Raw, watch for us on television tonight. The family is all in ready, in process and ready for the trip. SeatGeek is awesome. Go to SeatGeek, download it, go to settings tab, click add a promo code, put in the promo code OUTKICK, you'll get $20 off your first trip, uh, your first treatment, uh, your first ticket. Sorry, I'm thinking about lice. All right, um, I love you guys and uh, you'll be glad to know that I will be live again tomorrow, 6 to 9 a.m., Eastern, and I would encourage you to go read the article up at the top of OutKick. Also, my Game of Thrones review. I thought the opening with Arya Stark was absolutely fantastic. Oh, Zeke, 
I just think that Zeke Elliott, I think that Zeke is an idiot. If you're under investigation like he has been for a long time for sexual assault, first of all, you don't lift a girl's top in public at a St. Patrick's Day parade. Six days before the start of training camp, you do not get in fight, get in a fight with a freaking DJ. Uh, and I think this is a really bad sign for the Dallas Cowboys and Ezekiel Elliott. Um, I think he's going to miss a few games. Frank, thankfully for the Cowboys, running back is not necessarily the most important position in the NFL. But I think it's a bad sign for his future that he's involved in situations like these. I think that Dak Prescott's going to regress back to the mean, be good, but just okay in his second year. So many rookie quarterbacks have great first year, second year. The NFL figures that out. I think that is going to happen uh, on some level there as well. Um, so I think Zeke Elliott is an idiot. The show is back up and running. We'll be on every single day in the afternoon around 3 o'clock Eastern. I am Clay Travis. This is Outkick the Show. Go to Odd Shark for all your gambling and informational related needs. Be live tomorrow at 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern on Fox Sports Radio. Uh, that's 250 AM FM stations nationwide plus satellite radio, Sirius XM Channel 83. I love all of you. Hopefully you don't get screwed by an airline like I did. Never thought it would be my family getting bumped, but it happened to us. And I think Delta needs to fix their policies to make sure that it doesn't happen to other families again. Appreciate all of you. Share the show. I'm Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. See ya. D-back.